everybody. It's Lisa from Stregaluna uh, Metaphysical Shop. And I wanted to come to you live to talk to you a little bit about some herbs that um, that I have in stock. Not only that I have in stock, but they're ones that you can use for cold and flu symptoms. And I have, because of this crazy ass weather that I have um, been, that we all have been dealing with. Hi, Carrie, how are you? Sorry. Because it's crazy weather that we've been dealing with. Um, a lot of people are getting sick, including me. And I usually, uh, I'm starting to uh, do uh, psychic readings on uh, Tuesdays, I'm sorry. But, uh, hi, Darren. How are you? Thanks for coming. Um, because of um, me being, not feeling well, I didn't do them on uh, Tuesday. But I will start doing them, I promise. I will be doing... Um, some free um, tarot card readings and also probably reviewing some other um, card decks that I'm starting with that that I've been like some new card decks that I have and I thought they were really cool like that there's just a couple of really cool decks that I really resonate with really well but I'm learning them so I might offer some free readings just to learn the cards and um you know do some practice ones but with the tarot the regular um the weight deck the regular tarot cards um i've been doing them for over 20 years so if anybody ever wants you know a reading you can go to my website at stregaluna.net it's www.stregaluna.net and um and you can book it right online um i also have some angel art readings um on there too so, um, which is very unique, and uh, I mean, they're so cool. I love doing these art readings; they're really awesome. But back to the main topic. What I want to talk about is how you can use herbs and essential oils to help with um, cold, flu symptoms, re respiratory problems. Um, you know, just the base of the cough, the congestion, the shitty feeling that you get, you know, crappy, like you feel like I do right now. <laughs> but thank God I did take some, uh, uh, some, some daytime or non drowsy stuff. I don't know. And my doctor called in a script, which leads me to telling you that don't ever think that you can't combine Western and Eastern medicine because in my opinion and and as you can see behind me like that's not even that's just half of what I have of the herbs. Let me see if I can get a shot of it. There we go. Yeah, that's that's herbs and oils all over there. And that's just what I have in stock and then that tote is filled with herbs as well at the bottom there. But um, don't ever think that you uh, can't like it's not good to combine Eastern and Western medicine because a lot of times there might be a severe infection that you might need an antibiotic for. You know, like I got an antibiotic from my doctor today because I know I get bronchitis and I don't get a cold. It goes right to bronchitis and it sucks. But, you know, I use both. Like I was using eucalyptus, which I have some oils right here. Like I have eucalyptus essential oil. And I also make these mixed, uh, mixed blends as well. And, um, Eucalyptus is excellent for congestion, for cough, and uh, clearing the nasal passages. You could even do a facial steam with some eucalyptus. I don't know if you are familiar with facial steams, but a facial steam is when you and and for with when using an essential oil for a facial steam, you have to use uh, with essential oils less is more. Okay, so you want to use like literally one to two drops of essential oil okay and the steam and what you do is you boil the water um and then once the water is boiled you take it off the heat put it into a bowl and then you would add one to two drops of whatever oil you're using i'm talking about eucalyptus so this is what we're gonna say put eucalyptus and you could even put in eucalyptus and chamomile if you want to relax and clear your uh, nasal passages or the calm the cough and then you can uh, add chamomile or lavender if it's at night and you want to relax and be able to sleep better. Hi, Cindy. How are you? Thanks for coming. 
I'm just talking about some herbs and, and oils and stuff to use for uh, cold and flu symptoms. But um, anyway, back to the facial steam, what you would do is you would um, take the water off the heat and make sure it's not going to burn you. You know, you got to be really careful because steam burns are horrible. So you just get a towel and after you put your water and your essential oil drops into the bowl, you get the towel and you cover your head and you just let the steam and breathe in. <sighs> oh my gosh. And I'm telling you. They are so amazing, <laughs> so relaxing. And your skin, you could just feel all the toxins coming out of your skin, you know, and just like leaving your, your face. And you, and afterwards, your face and your skin feel so soft and clean. And it's just really a purifying remedy to use. And, and again, like that's it. If you're sick, you can use eucalyptus and lavender or, or eucalyptus and chamomile. Um, but if you wanted to do it just for your skin, you could use um, herbs or oils that are specifically for the skin, like rose. Uh, you can actually add, um, when you're boiling the water. Hi, Trish. Hi, Walter. How are you guys? Trish, it's so good to see you in here. And Cindy, I, I, I uh, haven't seen you guys since, gosh, I don't know how long. <laughs> so it's good to see you. Um, so say you wanted to do something for your skin uh, you could add some when you're boiling the water you would put rose petals and lavender and chamomile and cal calendula you could put throw some of them herbs and i can post this stuff in the uh, comments after i'm done the video but you can um, throw that in the water and basically it's like making a strong tea okay but you're actually boiling the properties of the herbs and you're putting them into this water. So then when you take it off the heat and it's still steaming, you want to do the same thing. You throw a towel over top of your um, head and let the steam come up and your skin just feels amazing. And trust me, I had a staph infection in my nose that traveled up and my sinuses and came out my skin here. So that is what I am doing. And trust me, this looks amazing compared to what it used to look like it was literally a hole like i literally had like a hole in hole in my head <laughs> go figure right <laughs> and that's not from just being you know the crazy person that i am it's just from an infection and it literally traveled up through my nose because doctors didn't catch it in time and it came out my skin and it caused so many problems and i have it on my arm I got the camera back. I have it on my arm here too. It literally went through my whole body. So, um, and in my chest area. Oh, look, I'm going backwards. <laughs> right here. You know, that's another scar from it. So yeah, it's it's really important um, to keep. Like, if you do get like any kind of respiratory conditions, um, but first of all, to keep your hands away from your nose as much as we go you know we wipe our nose or whatever we're just it's just not you don't even think about it you know and um you know just keeping your hands clean and because a staph infection is very easy believe it or not to get inside the nose because um it's the easiest place it can spread through the body and if you think about it when you sniff it goes down to your throat where does it go into your stomach it goes into your uh respiratory system you know, so, and then bang, it just, it could go crazy in your body. So that's something to really be aware of. Um, another oil I want to go over to is tea tree oil. I'm, I'm, I got to get used to this mirror image thing. There I go. Um, tea tree oil, great antibacterial, antibacterial, antifungal, um, antiseptic I mean it tea tree is like something that you want to have in your house because you can use it on abrasions skin wounds I use it on my skin now um, you're not supposed to use it on open wounds personally in my opinion and I am a certified holistic um, health practitioner or so holistic medicine and health practitioner I personally use it as long as it's diluted with a carrier oil you can use it on open wounds as long as they aren't stitchy like stitch wounds you know what i mean you don't want to put it on a cut that is like so deep that you need stitches but if you had stitches in a wound and you needed to keep it clean hi tasha thanks for coming 
if you needed to keep a wound clean that did have stitches as long as the the tea tree oil uh, essential oil was diluted then you could uh you could use it on the wound and it can be used on children okay and this is a, a little note that i want to tell you about using essential oils on children and pets because a lot of people have this misunderstanding okay so i really want to stress and make this clear about using essential oils on pets and children okay when you use essential oils on children okay um first of all if they're under two i don't recommend using it at all because what happens is their livers are not up um are not mature enough like ours are okay so you don't want to use them on that and it could be toxic to them okay but ages three and up you basically what you do is you're going to like double or triple dilute it depending on their age so in other words usually when you make one ounce of oil which is this size okay this is an ounce bottle so what you would do is you would put 30 drops to an ounce of carrier oil which is either your grapeseed or your olive depending on what you're using it for okay that's a normal adult dose is 30 drops to an ounce when you do it for children you would literally do 15 drops of essential oil and then fill up the rest with a carrier oil because of the like i said because of their um their uh, livers are not matured enough to handle uh, essential oils and I said you know a lot of say oh it's natural it's natural no it doesn't matter if it's natural respect mother nature you know because you know mother nature has given us these gifts to use to heal with so we can't abuse them because they can be you know toxic and fatal you know if you don't research what you're using before you use it you know I always say to, to do a patch test um, before you use any kind of natural remedy um, because you know this is and you wait 24 hours so what you would do is you would go inside your elbow or uh, or behind the knee and do put a little bit of the remedy and then you would be able to uh, and wait 24 hours and then if any kind of reaction comes bang don't use it because you know if you put it on their back guess what you're going to get that that reaction on your back or your chest or your stomach or wherever so you got to be really careful with them you know and talk to a a certified practitioner before you use anything hi Tina how are you thanks for coming um so you know you want to really like I said you want to be careful with that now regarding pets I am a an animal an avid animal person I cry at the sight of an animal being hurt I am I love animals. They're pure divine creatures that are put here to teach humans how to bring unconditional love. Okay, that's how I look at animals. I have five cats. I have a pregnant cat. One of them are pregnant. And um, she had a kitten already not too long ago. And we kept her. And I can probably say that I'm probably going to keep another one too, which is, hi, Ash. How are you? <laughs> So anyway, when it comes to using essential oils on pets, don't. Do not use essential oils on your pets. I don't care how much they are diluted, okay? Use herbs. Herbs are so much safer. The only, only, only time that you use an essential oil on a pet is if you take, and I want to show you how to do it right now, okay? You literally take like the top of the thing of the bottle you touch your finger on it literally I don't know if you could see it's like see how glossy it is rub your fingers together and go on their ears that's it okay and that is only if you have hi Jamie how are you and that is only if you need to calm the animal down um, and usually that's it okay because you can tip their ears animals smell now this is just cats I'm not sure about dogs I think dogs is even stronger cats can smell 14 times stronger than humans so can you imagine what that smells like to them I want you to put yourself in their position okay now you know I don't if 
most of you, I'm sure, smelled essential oil, okay, without it being diluted. It's so strong, okay? There's times that I used it, and I walked over and sat down on my bed, and my cats ran because I, actually, and I had it on me, and they ran. And you could tell because it's like, imagine something that smells so strong making your eyes water and you burning and everything. That's an animal smell 14 times stronger. 14 times stronger than us. So, with that said, don't ever use essential oils on cats or dogs. Okay? Unless, like I said, you're literally taking less than a drop and, like, tipping their ears. You're basically, like, it's like as if you were going to pinch the top of their ear without pinching it. You just clip it like with your fingers that's the most that you put on a dog or or a cat okay i'm going to tell you a little story about why and how i found out that essential oils were not good for pets and how they smell okay and and again their livers okay their livers are not strong enough to handle it and this is where my story comes in i had um went to pet smart and I purchased a natural remedy for fleas for my cats. My cats had fleas so bad I couldn't get rid of them. It was driving me nuts. So I go, oh, perfect, natural, great. Okay, look at the label. It's got essential oils in it. That time, I, did, I didn't know, right? So I spray down my cats. The next day, I had a cat named Billy. He was 22 pounds, okay? Big cat. Loved him. I lost him last year. Um, I was devastated. But um, Billy, his hair started to fall out. He was sick as a dog, I want to say, but he was a cat. You know, sick as a cat. <laughs> he was severely ill. And I remember him looking at me with his eyes. And, I, and being a psychic medium, I could connect with animals very well. And I just remember looking in his eyes and he's like, please help me. <laughs> That's all I could remember is like, he was saying, please help me. They lost their hair on their hind, on the back of their, you know, their back, the hind back. Um, and this was not just him. It was the other ones too. I felt terrible. And I swore that I would never, ever use essential oils on them again. Now, this is a completely natural remedy from PetSmart. I could smell the cinnamon in it too, which cinnamon is such a strong essential oil. I couldn't believe that it had cinnamon in it, you know, but it was terrible. It was terrible. And that from there on, I was like, never again. So I actually bought a couple of books and these are some good books too, that if you want, if you have pets that you want to treat uh, with herbs, it's Dr. Kids um, Herbal Remedies for Dogs. And he has one Herbal Remedies for Cats too. And it's, Dr. Kid, K I D D. <clears throat> Excuse me. Awesome, awesome books. I re I refer back to them all the time. So they're nice to have around. But on that note, you know, just like I said, you know, there's plenty of herbs. And what you do with the herbs when you're using them for our dogs or cats is you make a tea. It's just like making a tea for yourself. But what you're doing is you're doubling the herbs. So instead of one teaspoon, you're going to do two teaspoons. And then you're going to cover it and let it steep for like 15, 20 minutes. And then after that, you strain the herbs and you use the liquid for your pets. And it won't hurt them because the smell is not the same as an essential oil. So, you know, that's a really great way to, um, you know, to help your pets in a natural way without having to take them to the vet. And the cost-wise, oh my God, it's completely probably like less than a quarter of what it costs to take your pet to the vet and then get the medicine. So, you know, so it's a really good way to help your pets is with herbs. And feel free to contact me because I have probably 80 to 100 herbs in stock and I have some pet remedies as well. Okay, let's see what else we got. Oh, that's eucalyptus. I already talked about eucalyptus. Lavender. Lavender is awesome for relaxing this is one of the essential oils that you can tip your your pet's ears with okay and when i say tip the ears i mean like i just showed you like like that on their ears just like ching ching and it's like less than a drop of oil okay this is very good for overactive 
uh, pets or anxious pets or uh, pets that have a separation anxiety, great way to keep them calm and just bring them down and chill, you know? Okay, now, if you want to use these towards the cold and flu, this is great because it calms the respiratory system, okay? It's great if you're having issues sleeping from coughing, okay? Um, lavender is just anti-stress, anti-anxiety, anti-panic attacks. You know, if you, say you have panic attacks and say you have social anxiety, for example, okay? What you do is you take some lavender and you get a tissue or, or a piece of... Um, you know, yeah, a tissue or a piece of toilet paper, some kind of paper towel, whatever it might be. And you just like this and stick it in a little bag like ugh. you stick the paper or the piece of paper with the oil in a little bag like this and a little jewelry bag, or a little drug bag, if that's what you want to call it, whatever you want to call it, it's fine. It's a jewelry bag here. <laughs> and... When you go and you start feeling anxious, it's like the drug bag, and you go, and you smell, and you say, you snort, you snort, <laughs> sorry, you snort the lavender, now you smell the lavender, and you inhale it, and that's what aromatherapy is. You would just open the bag, and just take, you know, inhale it, you know, breathing in through your nose, out through your mouth. And you would, um, <laughs> thanks everybody. <laughs> hey, Keith, how are you? Um, so you would just put the, like I said, put the lavender in the bag with, uh, like on the tissue and then just keep it closed. And believe it or not, that one little, uh, amount of lavender essential oil, as long as this bag is kept zip locked, will last you a very, very, very long time. I've had samples of um, oils when I go out and talk to people. I bring samples, and I, that's how I do it. And they last, I'm talking six months, the samples will, la will last in just a piece of paper inside a Ziploc bag. Okay? So that's a little, um, a little uh, lesson for you for some of those oils. I have one more I want to talk to you. Good, Keith. It's nice to see you. I'm glad you came in. I'm glad. Busy is good. Busy is definitely good. <laughs> um, I want to talk to you about rosemary essential oil, too. This is another great oil for when um, body aches, okay? If you deal with any type of chronic pain, I have RSD, reflex sympathetic dystrophy. I was diagnosed in 2002. And um, that is, all right, you too, Keith. Love and light to you too. Thanks for stopping. I'm sorry. Um, Rose, I have RSD, reflex, sympath reflex sympathetic dystrophy, also known as complex regional pain syndrome. Uh, it's an, if, if anyone is not familiar with it, it is a nervous system disease, incurable disease that attacks the nervous system, causing it to be over an overactive position all the time. So basically, um, uh, if somebody gets a broken arm and gets the pain signals of a broken arm, I get those signals even though my arm is not broken. Okay, uh, caught, put me in a wheelchair for a year. So I was, you know, I, and what got me out of it? Natural medicine. That's how I got out of the wheelchair. I got off of the, all the medications that they were giving me with all the side effects, including the morphine that they had me on three times a day. And I was able to walk again. Took time, took patience, took commitment, but I was able to walk again. And I walk perfectly fine now without any, any issues. No, no, you know, no problems walking. There's times I get tired quickly. Um, but, you know, I'm alive. That's, that's the good part, right? And rosemary oil is one of the best oils for pain, okay? What I usually do is I use peppermint, rosemary, lavender, and black pepper. 
essential oils and I blend them into a oil and I actually have it on my on my shop online and it's called uh, Nervine oil it's for neurological and nerve pain and it helps so much within um, and I'm no lie within 20 minutes the pain is gone it, it's incredible it's totally incredible because there's times I, I wake up and I'm just in so much pain I can't even move and I throw that on and I, it's crazy it's like I never woke up in pain you know so that not only just for chronic pain but like for flu pain you know and that's why I bring it up because it can be used for cold and flu pain like body aches joint pain after workout pain um, any kind of pain you know and also um, migraines and headaches is uh, I have another blend for that that's peppermint and lavender and rosemary you can use those three so even the nervine can be used for migraines or headache and um and i'm telling you like i i swear by it i really do i swear by it because and, and trust me i don't i wouldn't tell you about anything that i haven't tried or used before i i call myself the um it's i'm my own guinea pig <laughs> pretty much because i um i try everything first you know, because I'm not going to tell you to try it and then say, oh, yeah, yeah, it works. Well, I don't even know if it works or not, you know. But those are the are pretty much the, um, I'm sweating, sorry. I'm, I'm, I've been sick. I've got hot and cold, hot and cold. But those are the pretty much the ones that I recommend, the main ones. There's loads and loads of herbs and oils out there that you could use for cold and flu. Those are the ones that I just told you about that I personally recommend okay and professionally recommend as well um, always do a patch test before you use any natural remedy again I told you that about that earlier you can find out how to do that on my website as well um, <coughs> excuse me I'm um, trying to think if there's anything else I could tell you about oh the pet thing and the children thing always consult a um, a certified practitioner uh, natural health practitioner um, before you use anything on your children or your pets again please 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 don't use essential oils on your pets on your cats or dogs use herbs you get the same properties from the herbs if not better honestly because you're taking the herb and you're extracting it right out into the water so you're getting you're going to get better results with the herbs and you're not going to make your pet sick okay so be really really careful um, even when you tip their ears you know be really really careful if you do that all right um, let's see okay uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I told you about the pets I told you about the children um, uh, under two, under three, I'm sorry, under three, be really careful, or two and under, I'm sorry, three and up is fine. Double dilution, actually more than that, triple dilution, okay? Safe, be safe and better safe than sorry. You can always add more, you can't take away, okay? That's the thing with essential oils. You have to be, you have to treat it like a medication because it's a natural medicine. And because it's a natural medicine does not mean that it cannot cause harm or fatality if not used as directed so it's something that you have to be really really careful about okay respect mother nature is what I always say gotta respect mother nature you know mate. so a couple things before I go I'm gonna tell you about I got some awesome stuff coming up um, every week I'm going to be giving out some um, short free readings free psychic readings I just so you guys know a little bit whoever has, doesn't know me I'm a psychic medium I've been a psychic medium since I was a child unknown to me until later in life but um, I finally figured it out when it started so um, yes I talked to spirit I talk to dead people. and um, I also do tarot card readings and something called angel art readings which is very unique okay and you can check them out on my uh, I have a couple websites 
lifeshareuniversity.com is where you're going to learn about the angel art readings. You can go there, you click services, psychic readings, and angel art. And you will actually see some of them, and they're really, really cool. They're basically like a digital portrait. I hand draw them digitally. I hand draw them on a, on a digital drawing board and uh, in Photoshop. And nobody, you don't even have to be there. Um, I just need a current photograph, birth name, and birth date. And you get all kinds of stuff through that reading. Also do crystal readings. If you have a crystal that is attra you're attracted to that you just got, you want to see how it's helping you, I can see in them as well. Um, I see all kinds of stuff in there. And you can get how that crystal is specifically helping you heal in your life. Okay, and then I offer tarot card readings as well, and I do group readings. So if you wanted to have friends and do a, do a little group party, um, their dis readings are discounted during group uh, group parties. Okay, so that's about the readings. Oh, and every week on Facebook Live, I'm going to be uh, offering uh, free questions. Okay, hi Debbie, how are you? Uh, I'm going to be offering, you know, you can ask a question or two, um, and then I'm just going to have a little thing that you got to do to get your little question answered, okay? So you just have to like, share the video and stuff. Nothing major. Also, have a great business opportunity for those that love metaphysical world, the metaphysical world, and herbs and oils like I do. Um, I have an opportunity that you can, you can actually, it's good to hear Dev. You can actually start your own business with um, with Stragaluna, okay? Um, you could become a magical practitioner and start doing home parties, events, whatever you want to do. However you want to sell it, you can go online. You can do stuff like I'm doing. Um, I actually have another live video on the Stragaluna site that I made last week that you can see a lot of the stuff that I have here. And I'm also going to be in Williamstown at the Williamstown Music Festival on June 2nd from 5.30 to 10, I believe it is. It's a Friday night, and I'll be vending at that event, and me and a friend will have loads and loads of stuff. We're going to have moon waters, oils, crystals, all kinds of good stuff. Incense, sage, <laughs> join us. Come visit us. It's supposed to be a really cool time, too. There, from what I heard, there's like they get like 13,000 plus people there, so it's a really big event, yeah. And that is again in Williamstown, and I will be posting information about that, okay? So, on that note, I hope that you guys start coming to see me on Facebook Live. I'm going to be doing more and more videos or Facebook Live videos each week. I'm just kind of working on some stuff to put together and, you know, what to talk to you guys about. If anybody has any requests on what they would want to hear about or learn about, please comment. I, I love comments. I love feedback. If, um, you know, even if you just leave a little, a little note, say hi, that would be great. Or if there's something that you want to learn about, whether it's crystals, herbs, oils, metaphysical, psychic, anything that has to do with the metaphysical world, I can, I cannot help you with. Okay. Thank you everyone for joining. Please like, share, comment. Okay. I love feedback. I love it. Love it. Love it. And I will be posting all kinds of links that we talked about today in the, um, comments. Thanks. One more thing. I have a new Facebook group that I provide all kinds of info and workshops and stuff in. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, it's called a metaphysically, spiritually, holistically awesome group. No a good name. <laughs> I love it. So I want you to go and join my group. Okay, because I'm going to like there's all there's units in there, there like units of um uh, of like courses and stuff like that, and I also have online courses. I'm trying to throw I'm throwing so much at you guys right now. I'm so sorry, I forgot to tell you about my courses. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot to tell you about my courses. <sighs> okay, I got lots of courses online 
www.lifeu.me, L-I-F-E-Y-O-U dot M-E. All kinds of courses, psychic awareness, um, I got my CD series up there, sessions one through three, which is comes with all kinds of worksheets and everything else. Um, there's there's all kinds of herbs, aromatherapy, cho reading, psychic, oh, I said psychic awareness, um, archetypes, learning about the archetypes, basically all life transformation um, it, uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. courses. Life transformational courses, okay? Because that's basically what my goal and purpose is, is to help you transform your life like I helped myself. I'm taking all my tragedies and turning them into triumph is what I do. And I want you to do the same thing, okay? So if you have, again, any questions, contact me. Any questions about any of the links, contact me. Any questions about anything else? Contact me. <laughs> yeah, I'm just me. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. I'll talk to you soon, and I'll see you next week.